Hey guys, welcome to part two of restoring this rare old felling axe. So this is where we left the axe head in part one. We'd attacked it with a wire wheel, given it a vinegar bath, and I was still struggling to get off this uh, this blackened scale at the back here. I'd also hand sanded up the edge. So what I think I'm going to do first is I'm going to put it in the sandblast and see if I can't get the scale off through that means. I'm hoping I should at least be able to tidy it up enough that then I can knock the rest off with a wire wheel, but uh, yeah, we'll see. So let's just crack on with it. The intros are boring enough anyway, right? Well, here's the before, here's the after. I'm still not getting all this scale off, but I'm going to carry on and obviously finish up this side and see if we can't get as much off as possible. And then hopefully this will either come off with a wire wheel or we'll give it another vinegar bath. Well, with a lot of perseverance, I actually managed to get almost all of the scale off with the sandblaster. Now I'm going to go over it again with the wire brush or the angle grinder there. And uh, yeah, we'll just kind of see what we're left with. Pre-wire wheel, post-wire wheel. Much better. That is going to be an etchable surface right there. Well, we've now got the entire axe head wire wheel down, and it's looking pretty good. The next step is uh, along the bottom here, you can see there's quite a few cracks and uh, divots, things like that, which I want to try and get out. So I'm going to probably reprofile the axe. So I'll use the belt grinder, come under here, come along the top, just smooth everything out. There's quite a few nasty cracks along the top here you can see. What I'm also probably going to do is fill in some of the gaps like here, there's a big crack on the back here, I'm probably going to fill those in with weld. And what I also didn't realise is during the forge welding process uh, there was a couple of small gaps just left in here where obviously when I, um, when I was cutting in with the hacksaw along this edge I obviously didn't do it completely flat and so it was kind of sticking up a little bit here. So I'll probably dollop a little blob of weld in each side, this one's tiny but just to sort of tidy it up and then obviously once I've ground it flat you should hopefully barely be able to see it. Unfortunately it does mean that it will show up in the etch but you know it's a trade-off. Uh, I can make do with that. And then also on the inside, I don't know how well you can see, all of the inside here is cracked so I'll probably just put a bead of weld going in there as well. Just to uh, hopefully give this thing a little bit of additional strength. So uh, yeah, grinding back, reprofiling and a few dollops of weld prior to the etch. Right, that's got all the parts welded up. Uh, I've already started filing down and reprofiling the edge of the blade here, so filling in those gaps. And uh, yeah, I was planning on doing this with the belt grinder, but unfortunately I'm a night owl and all my neighbours probably wouldn't appreciate me running this thing, so I'm having to do it the old fashioned way with hand files. Which is fine, I've got time. Well, that's got the blade segment reprofiled. As for the top and bottom of the eye, uh, I'm going to wait to do that on the belt grinder. That's, uh, that's a lot of metal to be reshaped. I'm probably not going to go that deep with it because some of these cracks run pretty deep. Um, so I think I'm just going to have to accept the fact that they're there to stay. But that's okay. It kind of adds to the, uh, the rustic element of the axe. So yeah, that's all fine. Okie dokie, so I've cleaned this thing up, reprofiled it. I've uh, re-hand sanded the blade to 240 grit for the time being. Uh, like I said, I've still got to reprofile around the eye, but I think first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to harden the blade and temper it. I'm not going to go too mad with uh, the hand sanding until I've actually got this thing to a hardened state, and I'm probably going to get up to about a thousand grit, give or take. So uh, yeah, I'm probably just going to heat the very tip up with blow torches, quench it in oil, and we'll see what we end up with. Yeah. Um, I don't think. I'm going to be able to get this hot enough with just the blow torches. I'm getting close. If I hold it in one spot, it will turn red. But I can't get the whole blade to uh, glow. 
Probably gonna have to put this in the forward, I reckon. Right, now we just gotta wait till the blade is red hot. Going in again. Right, take two. That sounds much better. So I've just cleaned the edge back slightly, and what's cool is you can now see the Damascus pattern starting to come through. So what I've got to do next is temper this thing, and I'm just going to do that with the blow torches because that part I can do. There we go, hopefully you can make out that nice gold colour there. So that's been tempered now. Right, we've now reprofiled the eye, made it look a little bit tidier. As you can see, there's still a lot of cracks running through this thing, both front and back. But uh, yeah, I'm not going to be able to grind them out, so they're just going to have to be a part of the structure. I'm pretty pleased with how that's looking. I think it's looking a lot tidier, a lot nicer. Um, and it's basically ready for the etch now. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not sure I've got enough ferric chloride, so I've ordered some more. I'm literally just waiting for it to arrive. It should have arrived about a week ago, so... Once again, couriers! Bit of a running theme on this channel. One day, I'll learn to be more patient. I've got half a litre of ferric chloride, and I'm going to dilute it in water and just leave the axe head longer to uh, etch. Hopefully that'll work. If not, as and when the other stuff does arrive, I can redo it. So yeah, I'm gonna acetone the axe head down, get it all nice and clean, get all the oils and contaminants off, and then I'm gonna dunk it in here, ferric chloride, top it up with water, and probably leave it for, I don't know, an hour, maybe a bit longer, depending. I'll just be babysitting this thing for a while, I think. This is acetone. This gets rid of any oils, anything nasty, anything that can get in the way between the acid and the steel to prevent it from etching in certain places. So just gonna give this a good douse, a good clean. Try and get everything off I can. All of that gunk, see? All right, I reckon that'll probably do. In goes the ax. In goes the ferric. And I'll go and get some water to top this up with. There we go, you can just about see the ax head submerged there. I've got the heat lamp on it, hopefully. Hey, why is it rotating? You're not supposed to be rotating. As I was saying, axe head in the ferric chloride, heat lamp applied, hopefully that should create a fairly quickish reaction. Uh, I'm going to come back and check it in about 30 minutes, have a look, if it needs longer, if it needs less, well, if it needs less I'm screwed. If it needs longer I'll leave it in longer. So let's check back then. Right, we're about an hour and a quarter into the etch and I'm just using a bit of scotch Bright. Just to give the surface a bit of a clean, to see what sort of pattern we're coming up with so far. Oh guys, this is going to look so good. I'm still going to leave this a bit longer, the etch is not that deep. That looks absolutely phenomenal. I'm not going to show you a close up yet, because I want it to be a bit of a surprise at the end, so unlucky. But I'm sure you can see a little bit of it from a distance. And hopefully you would agree that from what you can see so far, <laughs> this looks so good. I love it. Oh guys, this was a good idea. This was a really good idea. Then again, with a bit of shameless plugging, I suppose that, you know, if you were wanting to see what this pattern was looking like already, if you were uh, subscribed to my Instagram, you would see this, because I've been posting regular updates on various different axe restorations I've been doing recently. I haven't videoed them all, so they're a bit of an Instagram exclusive. But yeah, if you, uh, if you like what you're seeing and you want to get a bit of a sneak peek, go and check me out on there, because I'm always posting these days. I've become a complete social media whore. Well, that was close. I nearly forgot that I had to grind down and etch the wedge as well. Uh, I've not managed to get all the rust off this just because it's such an uneven surface, but the acid should be able to get rid of that as well. So let's plop this in too. Just like that. Right, we're about three hours into the etch now, and as you can see, it looks like it's done fairly well. It looks like this is the axe, but this is actually just the bubbles uh, from laying on the surface from it. But it's time to take it out and have a look what we've got. But there's your sneak peek. Right, and now we're going for the instant coffee etch. So boiling water, plus a load of instant coffee, simple as that, and we just leave it to soak in here. Uh, I don't know how long for, I'll probably have to look that up. Oh man, that smells good. Now I just really want a cup of coffee. Give that the old sharpie stir. In with the wedge, and in with the axe. 
There's a lot of coffee left. Cheers. Radio. so for the handle, I've got this one meter piece of white oak, which I think will look really nice when oiled. So the contrast between that and the sort of raw iron, Damascus etched steel head, hopefully that'll come up with some, uh, some sort of interesting contrast. Let's try and shape this thing out. I'm gonna do it the same shape as the original handle. I'm by no means saying that that is the best design for an ax handle, but that's, that's what it came with. And who am I to argue with the original designer of that ax? So let's get the old one and let's uh, sketch out the template on this thing. Right, that should just about be big enough. Let's just uh, just put that back together a little bit. Ah, why am I bleeding? Don't even know what I touched that was sharp. Arr. It's at these sort of times of the night when your neighbors are asleep that you really start to appreciate power tools. Oh, this oak is tough to cut. So that is, without doubt, one of the weirdest axe head, or axe eye, I should say, fit-ups I've ever had to try and shape. I've got no idea if it's going to fit. Um, obviously, I've tried to keep the triangle shape at the tip here for the head to slide down to, and then I've widened it out into a sort of wedge shape so that hopefully it will give the head something to butt up against with the, uh, the beard of the axe coming down here. Like I say, I've never fit up anything like this before, so hopefully it will fit. I think it might be a little bit loose on here, but that can be fixed with a couple of big old wedges, which obviously I'm planning on recycling the iron one that came with it, and I'm probably going to insert an additional wooden one as well, uh, partially for practical reasons, partially decorative. But uh, yeah, I think the, the plan is just to grab the head and actually see if it fits on now. Let's give it a try. Well, looking at the axe head on the handle, it's fairly clear where it needs to be cut down. Uh, this beard is digging in up here, so I need to remove some of this material. I'm thinking once I get down to this thicken bit, I can sweep it back out again. Uh, not quite sure how that'll look, but eh, we'll give it a go. Right, we're about halfway, and so far this is looking to be a fairly nice fit up, except for the fact that if you look down the blade, you can see that the axe handle veers off slightly. So I need to remove some more stock from this side so that the axe head will sort of twist itself straight. And yeah, we'll just keep refitting and reshaping as appropriate. Go. And it's straight. Beautiful. Okay, I think that's done. And there we go guys, there's the axe handle all done and now the axe itself is complete. Uh, I'm really pleased with how it turned out, I think it looks absolutely phenomenal. Uh, and yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this build.